All right. All right, everyone. So this is the final, the final uh, bit of content for today. I hats off to you all for making it this long. Um, we're still almost nearly 200 people, which is fantastic. Uh, and today I get to finish with uh, building community. At least that's a major goal of, of one of the one of the outcomes from the workshop. So again, as a reminder, right, FathomNet is in beta. It is by no means complete. Uh, and what we're trying to do as part of this beta process is get input from, from the community. So that's why we're, we're talking to you all today. So not only are we sharing the vision and goals of FathomNet and generating feedback for improved features, uh, we're also wanting to build the community around this, this data set to enrich it, uh, you know, get additional contributions learn from all these potential users um, and, and create something I think that we would agree would work really well. Um, so so let's the big question is is like how do you actually build community? And I'm an engineer. I don't know anything about really building a community. Uh, but luckily for us, right we've got Google um, or, or Google Scholar and you can do uh, some digging around to try and find you know how, how does one actually go about building a community? And so what you can do is you can come up with a, a lot of great resources and one in particular kind of stood out to me, um, you know, is looking towards the community psychology field. And this particular uh, piece of work uh, came up with four different factors or key factors that help define a sense of, of community. And so they include uh, one, membership. And so membership is defined to be a sense of belonging and identification. Uh, and alignment with other community members that have similar goals and interests. So I can probably, we can all probably agree that some of us here at least have some interest in the ocean. Uh, and so if, you know, if that's our starting point uh, to create membership, then great. Um, but obviously we're curious to find out what else, what else you think is true. The second is influence. Um, and, and that's where, you know, members of a community should really feel empowered to have some sort of say in what the group does, right? And so group cohesiveness then depends on the group having this, this ability, right, to contribute to members. And so this, this influence idea like is very, very important to us and is why we've created a number of different ways or mechanisms for people to, to provide input, including this workshop, um, but I'll also go over some of those other um, key features next. The third is integration and fulfillment of needs. Uh, and members should really feel rewarded for participating or, or get value out of using this, this kind of information or being part of the group. And so this is something that you know, we've, we've, we've been thinking a lot about, uh, but we're looking forward to getting input from you all in terms of like, what would you like to see? Uh, we've been trying to think about ways to create attribution. So you know, how do we get data hosted places or generate DOIs so that you can you know, get credit for your data contribution? But obviously there's a lot more to that, not just generating DOIs. Um, so we're hoping that these ideas will surface during the, the breakouts. And then finally, you know, a shared emotional connection. So that comes from quality interactions with the group. And, um, you know, this is part of the reason why we're, we're really pushing for having an inclusive group, being open to people's ideas or suggestions. And really, we just want to have this conversation uh, where we're trying to build something together that, that works really well for our uses. Um, so Keeping these four things in mind, I wanted to go over some of the things uh, or features that we've already built out as part of FathomNet and where we're hoping to go. So as you all know, we've got the, the website. And if you go on the About Us page, you'll see a lot of different information and resources, uh, including terms of use for the data, uh, quick external links uh, that can get you around, as well as a story about our origins. And obviously acknowledgments. There's a lot of people and funding agencies that has contributed to the, the creation of FathomNet. Uh, what I want you to do, though, when you get a chance um, to, to, to go and look at the join the FathomNet community. And so there's a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, for one, we have a, um, I can't move things around, uh, something that you can sign up uh, on our mailing list. Uh, I'll tell you honestly that 
you will not get very many uh, emails from us for the mailing list, only I think when we post new tutorials or information to our blog. So signing up for that is not going to sign you up for weekly emails from us, I will tell you that. Um, the second thing is uploading your annotated images to Fathomnet. Um, so, you know, there's a number of different ways um, that you can do that, and Brian will go over some of those different ways. Um, also, you can verify images and or labels in Fathomnet that correspond to your subject matter expertise. And this is something we're hoping, you know, with contributions from the taxonomic community, as well as the marine science community, right, that we'll be able to, um, you know, have Fathomnet become like this gold standard for label data that can be used for algorithm development um, and, you know, like animal identification for the community. You can also download Fathomnet images for your analysis, uh, and you can also share your outputs, um, either you know code or machine learning models and weights. I'm getting behind on the Fathomnet GitHub repository. And so Eric and Kevin did a great job of um, you know explaining how one could go about doing that. Um, I also want to highlight the other section on the GitHub that both Eric and Kevin did not cover which is the community feedback. Um, and so it's through this section of this repo that you can then um, you know, get a look and also provide us uh, with some feedback, either as an issue or as a discussion item. So if you select on issues, this is where you can tell us if there's a bug in the API, a bug in, in the website, you know, some feature you'd like to see integrated into uh, you know, some of these tools uh, you'll notice there's already uh, a number of them, like 23 issues that we're tracking or currently tracking. Uh, a lot of them might be from me, but the point is, is like this is a mechanism for you to directly tell us if there's something wrong or something needs to be corrected or changed. Um, the other, so if you've never actually submitted an issue in, in, in GitHub, just click on the, the green button there that says new issue. Uh, and then if the discussion is actually really valuable for us because, you know, we're hoping to have these discussions now as part of the workshop and by no means do we expect or anticipate those discussions to stop. And so in the discussion section of the community feedback, this allows you to provide us with, you know, open ended ideas or, you know, conversations about an idea uh, concept. So, for instance, uh, Tropic of Dan, he's one of our presenters uh, tomorrow with the enthusiast group. You know, he had an idea about mentorship. So how can we build a mentorship system around around Fathomnet, you know, potentially bringing enthusiasts into the loop of, you know, parataxonomy or taxonomy community? And, um, you know, th these are all great ideas, but it gives us an opportunity to go back and forth, uh, weigh pros and cons, and also think about ways that we can, you know, implement something like this in the future. Um, so, you know, while we're going to be having these conversations today, around you know these discussions or ways we might improve fathom that you know in the future you can use this tool as a mechanism to reach out to us and we will have that conversation um, so again to to do that you know that you click the, the green button to open up a new um, a new discussion topic so that's on the github uh, we also have uh, how-to videos and workflows or articles uh, that are that can be found on our Medium as well as YouTube channels. So starting with the Medium, um, already I noticed there's a lot, some questions uh, around, you know, how do you interact with the data or how do you upload data? And, and interestingly, obviously this workshop is a resource, but we already have a lot of tutorials on our Medium page now that you can just learn from and run with. Um, so, for example, I'm just going to highlight some of, of these articles. Uh, so Brian's got uh, something on, you know, how, how do you actually load data or submit localized Im image annotations to Fathomnet. Um, then there's, um, you know, Kevin wrote an article on how to download images and bounding boxes from Fathomnet using Python. Uh, Eric also wrote an article about how you can upload your ML model to Fathomnet. So it contains all of this information already. And then finally, John uh, wrote a, a nice article that explains how one can, you know, contribute data to Fathomnet via Tater. The point is, is you know, if, if you have an idea or if you have a workflow or something you want to share with the community, let us know because we can publish that to uh, our medium or our blog. So besides the medium, we also have the YouTube channel. 
uh, and the recordings from this workshop are actually going to be posted there. And so I'm going to uh, also follow up in an email with links for them. But on the FathomNet channel already, we've got a number of different videos or video tutorials that would be helpful and, in fact, are being used or have been used for uh, our educator uh, collaborators that have been trying to work with FathomNet as well as the NOAA data in their classrooms. Uh, so some of the videos include a, a deep sea guide demo um, where I kind of walked through the Ambari deep sea guide and how students can interact with uh, some of the Ambari data already. Um, also did a, a VARS query video demo. Uh, and Carol Ann, which is a student in Deanna Soper's group, she also did a really helpful Sea Vision AI Tater tool demo. So you, these, you know, these resources are up there. You can um, poke around and take a look. The point is, is we want this information to be out there and available so that you could be learning um, as we go along. And again, if you have any tutorials or videos you'd like to share, just please let us know. Uh, the final thing is, you know, you can contact us via email, which is fine. Uh, but we also offer a number of different ways, you know, to connect, to connect with us as well. And so I'll go over those things after this next session or section, which is the terms of use. And I think this is going to be this is really important, right? Because it's 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 valuable for us to understand what kinds of ways we can use this data, um, because you know people are are contributing valuable data, and they want to make sure that it, they're being used responsibly. So the first thing I wanted to highlight is that you know annotations. So there's there's a fathomate use policy, and there's differences between annotations or the metadata that's associated with the images, and the images. So the annotations in this data set um, are licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. So that means they can be broadly used. But the images, however, are a bit different. And the reason why we did this is because, you know, contributors like Mbari or National Geographic Society don't want just anyone using this, this image data, right? They, they want to still control how those data are being used. Um, and so as we built the FathomNet database, what was really important to those users was to ensure that there was a way to track back to every single, you know, from every single image to the original owner. Um, and so what that means is that, you know, FathomNet does not own the copyright of images that are accessed. And the use of the images that are either directly or indirectly hosted by FathomNet are licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. So it's, it's a very restricted license, but the important sense is the following one because it provides an exception to that particular license where they, the uh, images can be used for training and development of marine machine learning algorithms for commercial, academic, and government purposes. So that sentence is very important because it provides an exception to that, um, to that license mentioned above. And I have to tell you, I spent months with IP lawyers from Stanford, making sure that we had something that, you know, all these different parties or different users were happy with. Um, and so another point I think that's really important to emphasize is that for all other users of the images um, or other uses of the images, users should contact the original copyright holder. Um, and so again, that's why we built the database so that you can track back to the original uh, copyright holder uh, or the original owner of every image that's within the, the FathomNet database. And the last thing is because the United States is a very litigious country, uh, we also have a disclaimer and, you know, images and annotations are provided by the copyright holders and contributors as is. And, you know, you can't hold us responsible if, if something doesn't work. So please, please take a moment to look at this. If you have any questions, of course, we are happy to answer them. In addition to the FathomNet data use policy, though, we are also asking people to agree to the following terms. And so these following three items are important when we think about building community, right? So we want to ensure that, you know, people are, are seeing their data being used appropriately, but also understanding, you know, where their data are, 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 are being used. So first, obviously, acknowledgments. So if you're using FathomNet data for publication or project, please acknowledge uh, our publication. Uh, right now, it's kind of bouncing around in a bunch of journals, but we did put it up in archive uh, so you can download it, take a look. There's a lot of information in there. 
Uh, there's even tables about recommended or required metadata uh, for submission that, that can be really helpful. Uh, the other thing is we ask that you, if you're presenting uh, something or a poster, please include a Fathomnet logo on your materials, right? Because we want people to realize that this is a resource that can be used pretty broadly. And I think the Fathomnet logo is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, in fact, people who are participating in this workshop, we can mail you a sticker with the Fathomnet logo. So I'll get back to that later. But you can find the Fathomnet logo in all of its versions, uh, again, on our GitHub. And you know, here you can see a list of all these different versions. You click on one, you can download it, and then put it in your presentation. So, so keep that in mind. Next is enrichments. And what these are are ways in which the user can contribute back to the Fathomnet community. And that can be you know, by creating how-to videos or workflows that are posted you know, in our Medium or YouTube channels. Uh, you can post and share your Fathomnet trained models on GitHub in the model zoo really, really important to be able to share those with the community. You can contribute you know, training data or label data to the database, or you can provide subject matter expertise to help validate or verify submitted data for the purposes right, of growing the ecosystem. If we're ever going to get to our goal of, uh, what, what did I say, 500 to 1,000 images for currently 200,000 different animals uh, that have been described, we've got a long way to, to go in order to get there but we will if we have you know, community contributions. And then finally, the last bit is benevolent use. The data will only be used in ways that are consistent with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. If you're not familiar with them, you can link to them from our website, um, and, but, but take a look. So this is obviously very important with us. So I also wanted to highlight additional ways that you can connect with the FathomNet uh, community. Uh, one of them is on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash FathomNet, uh, follow us. Uh, stay tuned also because we're going to be putting together a Twitter, Twitter bot uh, because we're nerds. Uh, the next thing you can do is join us on Slack. So we do have a separate FathomNet Slack space. Um, so you can see all the different ways that we're, we're connecting, uh, you know, our advertising workshops, uh, you know, brainstorming ideas for this Twitter bot. But anyways, please join and, uh, you know, be part of the, the discussion there. The other thing that we're, we're also trying to do is, is really build a, an enthusiast community. And we were fortunate a couple months ago to uh, get to know or get connected with the live stream oceanographic enthusiast community. Um, and, and this group actually watches all of these ROV dives that are live streamed around the world. And so what they've done is they've invited us to also be involved uh, uh, and, uh, as part of the Discord. And there is a channel specifically for FathomNet but in this channel, there are ways for us to connect with them and you know, uh, contribute to FathomNet or other projects. So the, the members of the Livestream Oceanographic Group will be um, leading discussions tomorrow around the enthusiast um, ideas or like enthusiast breakout. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, please uh, take a look. And I'm just gonna list all the different ways you can connect with us. Obviously there's email, there's the website, there's the GitHub, there's the blog, YouTube, uh, and then, oh, I wanna mention YouTube, we can only get a custom URL if we have more than hundred subscribers. So please subscribe. Otherwise we have to continue using this gobbledygook of a, a URL. Um, that's an aside. We've got the Slack space. We've got the, the, the Discord that's uh, run by the live stream oceanographic group. Um, so there's all these different ways to connect with us. And I realize, you know, a lot of us want to be efficient and only have one way, right, that can reach all of us. Um, but the point is, at least for us, is we can create all these different mechanisms to connect because we want to connect where those communities are. Um, so this is at least a starting point. If you have any other ideas, please, please let us know as part of the, the, um, the breakouts tomorrow. And, you know, how are we doing? We don't really know. You need to tell us. Uh, but really, we're just excited to, to see you all here. And we're definitely looking forward to, you know, some of the discussions that come out of the, the breakout sessions tomorrow. So with that, I am happy to take any questions. Can I do a couple housekeeping things first before we do questions? Sure. Excellent. Thanks, Kakani. Um, 
Kakani mentioned stickers. I've put a link in the chat a couple times and I'll do it again. So it's right where you can see it. Um, for a form where you can put in your mailing address so we can send you a sticker. And also um, a field for you to let us know if there's anything we missed today that you'd like to see covered tomorrow. Um, we can't promise we'll be able to get to everything. We do have a full schedule, but if there are some common things that we see have been missing today, um, please make sure that you put your thoughts in there for tomorrow so that we can hopefully address them um, and or follow up in another way. Tomorrow is gonna to be focused on two breakout sessions. The first one will go more into depth on four of the topics and those will be focused on the taxonomy, um, programming enthusiasts and educators. So you'll be able to identify which breakout you want to join um, and you'll be able to learn more about resources available based on that community's use cases for FathomNet. The second breakout session will be more discussion and feedback on how we can improve FathomNet and really you know, get input from you on how it can be more useful for you and your work. Um, so before you leave, please fill out that form and then we can be available for questions until the top of the hour. All right, is someone curating those questions? Now I can. The list of links. Can you put the list of links in the chat? Um, they are actually in the agenda. So oh, there you go as well. So take a look at those. Oh, the tiny URLs are being blocked by an institution. That's the problem. Ah, okay, we can do that. No questions. It's been a long day. Thank you to all of the 163 people who are here for hanging in there for three hours. We realize it's a lot. Yeah, um, there's one question I think from Sidi. I don't know if I said your name right. How do you see Fathomet evolving as new species are discovered in the deep sea? Um, well, uh, there's a couple of ways. I, I think the what's really interesting, the way that we've built Fathomnet is that it can use the worms hierarchy um, and then also the, the FathomNet uh, taxonomy tree or whatever, that is actually linked directly to worms and is updated every month. And so as new species come online, you know, that concept will emerge, you know, in the, the, the data hierarchy. Uh, so, you know, then if there's a new animal, then we'll see if we'll get imagery from the community members, right, that actually did the observation or did the, the, the description, right, that can then get into FathomNet. So I, I think the the take home is, is we tried to build FathomNet so that it could be extensible, you know, as new new species um, are discovered. A question about models. Why was YOLO selected over other models? Well, we have, yeah, go ahead, Ben. I, I can take that one. Um, mostly because we just can't train all models. So we just pick some as our as our example ones. They were ones we we're familiar with. So the ones you see up there, there is a YOLO V5 and a Detectron 2 model. Um, but you know, we recognize there are so many model architectures out there. And the idea is to put the data in a format so that you can use whatever you are most comfortable with or whatever you want to see trained on. So if you want to try something new. Um, that's what we want is we want other people to do this because we don't have all the best ideas for architectures, nor are we able to train all the different types of uh, experiments that are out there. So if you have a preferred one, please train it and contribute it to the model zoo. Thanks, Ben. There have been a few questions from, from a couple of people about um, geological annotations. Um, and currently, I don't think we have any sort of standardized way of noting um, geology. Is that correct? Uh, I can, oh, go ahead, Kikani. Um, so at Ambari, we do have our own internal standard, and that's included in FathomNet. So you will see some uh, annotations for geology features there. With that said, again, because we're flexible with our, our taxonomy providers, uh, if you have a geological standard you want included, please let us know so that we can work with you to get that into our 
our own um, taxonomy providers. Is there a geological, like the equivalent of worms or one of these other, um, you know, biological standards? Is Does that exist for geology? CMEX? CMEX. Cool, we should, we should look into these. Yeah, and then- So that we can to, standardize. Yeah, but then also feel free to take a look at um, what's already there as part of the MBARI, um, the MBARI provider, because um, we, we may already have some of that already implemented. We got a lot of geologists in Ambari too. Hey, Dougal. <laughs> oh, I think I have to make you a co-host one second. You, you should be able to just unmute people if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ask to unmute. I'm asking to unmute Dougal, but I'm just going to make you a co-host, Dougal, and then you can do that yourself. Yep. Yeah. Um, for the geology uh, equivalent to worms, I think at the Marine Video Workshop, uh, how long ago was it? Uh, six, seven years ago or something. There was a geologist there who introduced us to something similar in terminology, but I've been trailing through all my uh, records from then and I can't find it for the life of me, but I think one does exist. And it was it was set out hierarchically with uh, codes and things associated with it as well. And the geology people who are taking part in it all were aware of it. Just, I, I don't have that in here. Okay, we'll definitely look at CMEX too. Um, anyone else have any questions, comments, concerns, but please fill out the, the poll, uh, cause we want to make sure we're able to cover any of the major questions that you might have. There's a question about bounding boxes. Um, is the bounding box at the species level? Okay. So ideally we would get bounding boxes or annotations at the species level, but we can't require that, right? Some, some imagery, you just don't have that kind of resolution to ID down to species level. So what we ask people to do is, is provide annotations or localizations. Well, localizations for sure. It's, it's the annotation or the, the classification down to their, their most certain level. So that could be family class genus. So we have some flexibility there. And for the boxes, they should be around the individual thing that you're identifying, not a group of things, right? Yes, that's kind of what we're aiming for. Yeah, just wanted to confirm if the question was about specifically the bounding boxes. Excellent, well, please um, check out that form. Um, I will put in the... Um, do we have the Google form itself? Yeah, um, I think let me, let me that is it. If you're having problems with the tiny URL to go ahead and put in your mailing address and any suggestions to cover tomorrow. Um, lots of folks are starting to drop off now and I think we can probably wrap it up at this point. Thank you everyone. Signing off, see you tomorrow.